Hello and welcome back. This tutorial will cover how to use gradient maps effectively to color a black and white painting, as well as tips for making your artwork pop once you have the basic colors in place. This is an intermediate level tutorial and I'm going to assume you have a good handle on most of the features in Clip Studio Paint or other drawing programs that are similar. In order to easily apply the gradient maps, the first thing that needs done is separations. These are also called flats. I use the lasso tool to quickly block in large areas. You'll find a link to download the tool in the description box below. The actual colors used here do not matter. I pick colors that are different for each part of the painting so that making selections from them later is much easier. When moving on to a new area, I create a new layer and move it below the existing flats. This helps with speed because I don't have to keep every part of the selection super tidy. I merge these layers as sections are completed. Repeat this process until everything is colored. I double check everything by raising and lowering the opacity so that I can see the colors better and to make adjustments as necessary. Make sure to mark the final flats layer as a reference layer by clicking the little lighthouse icon. My setup is already done, but you might need to make sure your auto select tool refers to the reference layer in the tool settings. I select the skin, then I right click and hover over new correction layer. If the marching ants bother you while you work, just hide the selection by clicking the show border of selected text in the interface. Let's give them a skin color. I choose the skin gradient set. This will also be linked in the description box so that you can download it. I select vanilla and nothing happens. A look at my layers tells me what's wrong. It's actually working fine, so I'm gonna hit okay. The issue is that it's not applying the gradient map to anything yet. I right click above the highest layer and make a copy of the grayscale image. Then I drag it into place under the gradient layer. Now we can see the changes made. Simply changing the layer mode of the folder containing gradient maps to through instead of normal would have worked as well, but this would have made using the flats later much more difficult. If the flats layer is hidden, you can't make selections from them, and it's time consuming to hide and show them all the time. So putting the grayscale layer above them and having the flats shown is much quicker. Correction layers use masks and you can edit them non-destructively. There's a small problem being created by the gradients. The darkest parts are lighter than they should be. And we could physically adjust this, or we can fix this with another correction layer. This time I use brightness contrast. This is useful if you're having trouble getting the right range of values in your skin tone, or if you want a different shade. You can see it remove the purple color from his nostrils easily. Don't forget that you can always edit an existing gradient to get the colors and results you need. From here I finish making selections and create gradient map layers for each part of the painting. I end up using a lot of layers, so I select these using shift click and right click to put them all into a new folder. Then I change the layer mode to through. I'm still kind of bad about naming layers and staying organized, but it really helps. I took a small break here and edit the gradient maps to match my character's design. 
It's looking pretty good, but there's still a lot we could do to make this more vivid. Gradient maps can give a good range of color, but they kind of fall flat because it's difficult to keep in mind the environmental light and, of course, variations in skin color. I make a new folder and name it Color Correction. I set this to Through and create a new layer. Then I set the new layer to Overlay. I paint in cool tones and redden the character's cheeks and nose. Getting the exact colors to use for this will take some practice and experimentation. Regardless of your subject's race, it's pretty safe to assume that some redness to the face and ears and joints will work well. Just make sure the red you're using doesn't lighten the skin. It should make it slightly darker or even just bring up the saturation. I use cooler tones in the areas that are not in direct light. Then I deepen the color range of the background by painting in a dark blue around the edges. Finally, I add highlights and rim lights using a color that is close to the color of my light source. I like to double check that the changes I made are actually beneficial before moving on. The next set of enhancements will use a linear light layer. This is actually something I learned how to do recently and I found it very useful. I bring my color to as close to 50% gray as I can by guessing. Then I paint a few strokes. It doesn't appear to be doing anything at all. But now let's adjust the brightness of the gray. Pretty big difference. If you stick to grays, you can paint in highlights and shadows, much like a dodge and burn tool in Photoshop, in a single layer. How dark or bright either of these are depends on how dark or light your gray color is. Keeping that in mind, I paint in the deepest shadows and places where light will barely reach. In the other available swatch, I pick a gray that's a little lighter to paint in the highlights. With the shadow and a light color picked, I can easily switch back and forth between them to quickly adjust the values. I also paint in more detail and define the shapes of things more in general. Everything from here on out is mostly cleanup and post-processing. With this workflow, some parts of the painting can get a little oversaturated. To fix this, just make a new saturation layer and dull down those areas. Another undesired effect that this workflow can have is it can create a colored outline around the character. Feel free to leave this in if you like the way it looks. I'm going to clean up the edges by making a new layer set to normal. And I just color pick the background and paint away the redness. Let's 
let's see how the skin color looks now that we've done the other correction layers. I just double click the existing gradient layer to edit it. Most of these look pretty good still. The warm and cool tones read well with the different natural tones. I really like the red Oni gradient. I'd be tempted to make this guy a red or blue demon if that made sense for the character. Time to put on the final touches. I merge visible to a new layer. Next, I apply an unsharp mask filter and I keep the radius low, but keep the strength near the middle. Now I want to apply a mask to the layer and erase any parts that I don't want as much focus on. I repeat Merge Visible. This time I apply a Gaussian Blur filter to the layer with a strength of about 10. I mask that and then delete everything. Now I paint back in parts of the mask to blur areas out that I want to fall away in the distance and to help with the central focus of the painting. For consistency, these two new layers will go into a folder called post-processing. As a final step, I make a new layer set to add glow. I paint a few small highlights with my soft airbrush, and since my guy is in the bright sky, I want parts of it to be even more lit and affected by the bright yellow sunlight. This kind of is like a gentle lens flare effect. Be careful not to overdo it because it can really blow the values of your painting. And we're done. This is my first time trying to do a video that actually teaches a technique, so I hope it was helpful. All of the custom brushes and tools used in the video are linked below. Leave a comment to let me know if you learned anything.